And Marty Sissoko to jump it up. And we're underway with the Spartans controlling the opening tip. And one thing about USC, a really good one of the best in the nation at defending the two-point shot. Mostly man-to-man -man will play some zone. Both teams coming off a loss in their conference tournament quarterfinals. Michigan State lost to Ohio State. USC fell to Arizona State. And Michigan State's first shot of the day is no good. Well, that was a set that Tom Izzo came out with wanting Joey Hauser to go one-on-one. -on -one. They isolated him on that side all by himself, but he was not able to finish on Kobe Johnson. Drew Peterson has the ball, certainly a guy to keep an eye on today. He's been bothered by a bad back. His first shot is good. Can I ask a question? Were both these coaches, were they together making this up? <laughs> because that was a one-on-one -on -one for Drew Peterson from Andy Enfield. His work with the fadeaway jumper. Enfield told us yesterday, we've got to get Peterson going. He was 2 of 12 in their last game. says happy St. Patrick's Day. Well, we were saying about Drew Peterson, Andrew, he's been hurt with that back, and he's 12 for his last 44, so him getting off to that start really helps. USC finished tied for second in the Pac-12 with Arizona, a team that lost to Princeton yesterday. Baseline flush is not there for Trey White. You know, he saw Marty Sissoko coming at him, and he took his eye off the rim and looked at Sissoko. Hauser in the corner for three. Book it. And you can hear the Michigan State fans in Columbus. And that's what makes, like you said, Andrews, 45% from three, Joey Hauser. Tom Izzo told us he wanted A.J. Hogard on Drew Peterson. That is the matchup here. Peterson, turn around. Is no good and tipped around right back to Peterson. And it's 6 9. It helps that Hogard was able to make him take a fadeaway jumper there. Boogie Ellis. And that was from way out there. No good. Quickly the other way in transition, and it's out of bounds. It'll stay with Michigan State. Let's take a look at advanced stats presented by Invesco QQ. Q and Michigan State, as we told you, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. They don't really have an inside presence, which is why their two-point percentage is not as good as it's been in the past. Sissoko's a very good defender, not a scorer in the lane. And they go to Jackson Kohler very early in this game. Hogard comes up short on the drive. If you watch tape of that USC game last time out, Peterson really was bothered by that back, but so far looks like he's moving okay. Yeah, he didn't look good for a few games. And we have a foul called against Tyson Walker. Yeah, I mean, Trey White is the big freshman for USC, about 6'7", and he's got Aikens on him, who's about 6'2". I mean, it's Walker on him, who's about 6'2", so that was a tough matchup. So the freshman, Trey White, heads to the free throw line. USC as a team, third best in the Pac-12, shooting 74% from the line. You can watch CBS Sports HQ for free. 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Well, you know, we were talking with Andy Enfield yesterday about foul shooting because he was one of the great foul shooters at Johns Hopkins Division III school when he played. This year, USC is up eight points from the free throw line, which is the biggest jump in the country in major college basketball. And there's a great move there by Walker. He has been explosive in terms of driving the ball, and he has shot the three much better this season. Two 30-point games this season for Walker. 30 against Purdue, and then 31 on the road at Iowa. You know, one thing you're not going to see in this game is a lot of posting up. It's mostly facing the basket perimeter players. White lost a handle on it, and he turns it over. Fouls over an early three. Locates Aikens. His triple is no good. Hauser fighting for it. Tipped up in the air. Peterson has it. 
and a good job by Michigan State getting back in transition and locating people. Peterson from the free throw line. And Hogard wants to push. Aikens is up ahead. And now Hogard will pull it back. Michigan State, 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games. Walker may have gotten poked in the face right there. And grabbing you... his nose. Aikens on the left-hand finish. I'll tell you what. And Tyson Walker has some blood. Roger Ayers will stop the action, and that'll take us to our first timeout of the day. Michigan State up by five early. smile on his face for USC yesterday when he told us he loved having a seven-footer come off the bench for the Trojans. He does not have that trick up his sleeve tonight as a freshman. Vincent Iwuchuku is unavailable once again for USC. We haven't seen him for two weeks when he played 12 minutes in that game. He has back stiffness and soreness. I spoke with the freshman. He said he's only able to do core exercises right now. What hurts him the most is running long periods of time. Now with guard play today, that would have been tough. By the way, Tyson Walker was hit in the face for Michigan State before this play. He was treated nose and mouth. The refs went to the monitor. They cleared him, and he is available for Michigan State to go back in. Good stuff, Jamie. Thank you very much as Joshua Morgan makes his first shot attempt of the afternoon. And that's a bonus. He only scores six points a game, but he can make that 12-footer. Kobe Johnson, an excellent defender right up on Hauser. Johnson, a member of the Pac-12 All-Defensive Team, as Aikens with a two. And they switched that, which USC does on the perimeter, and Aikens took advantage of it with his quickness. <laughs> Reese Dixon Waters has entered for USC, the Pac-12 sixth man of the year. Peterson for three. Yes! Good signs early for USC fans with Drew Peterson having five points. And you see Michigan State, they're really trying to push that tempo up in the secondary break a little bit. Ball turn around, too strong. And a scramble with Ellis coming away with it. I'll tell you, so far in this game, Jaden Nakins has done an unbelievable job on Boogie Ellis, who's been averaging 24 in his last seven. He's only taken that one shot from deep. Peterson to the corner, and that three is no good by Dixon Waters. Offensive rebound, Johnson, and Malik Hall corrals it. Hogard racing up ahead, and we have a foul and an offensive foul called on A.J. Hogard. I mean, that was one he should have pulled out because he was going in there all by himself. USC did a really good job of getting back. You can see they got three guys back before Michigan State had their second guy there. USC a really good defensive team, 10th in the country in block shots, and they hold their opponents to just 39%, which is 7th best across the country. And the big thing, as we said earlier, Andrew, that, that should have been a foul there. The big thing is, is the way they defend the inside the arc, top four in the country. Ellis misses another, he's 0 for 2, defended now by Trey Holloman on that last set. Freshman from Minneapolis on the floor for Tom Izzo. Hauser is fouled. That time the switch brought Boogie Ellis onto Hauser, and that's one thing that Tom Izzo does. He will take advantage of those switches. This time he had the small on the big, and the big tried to take him. First round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins today on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU and ESPN News. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Hauser 87% at the free throw line this season. And you know, Andrew, one thing we have to keep an eye on is that Michigan State has been outscored in the paint in 12 of their last 14 games. Right now, they're outscoring USC 7-0 in the paint. I saw Joey's parents, Stephanie and Dave, what a week for them. Of course, their other son, Sam, plays for the Boston Celtics. They played in Minnesota on Tuesday night, and after the game, they drove 12 hours from Minneapolis here to Columbus so they could see Joey in the first round.
Dixon Waters from the baseline, no, and how about Malik Hall going up to grab it? What an X factor he is for Michigan State. He's the guy who's been hurt this year a little bit, hasn't had a great season, but he is very, very capable to be that fourth scorer that they need. Sissoko back out there. He's calling for it. He's got it down low. Position on Morgan. Way short on the turnaround. See, there's a situation where Morgan just pushed him out. He needed to just pass that out because he ends up taking a fadeaway jump hook. Touches nothing. Ball on Peterson. Peterson to the corner to White. And Walker the rebound. USC came to Ohio on Tuesday. Wanted to get an extra head start on the time change. 9 a.m. local for them, noon Eastern time. And Andy Enfield said he had no concerns about the early start. He said, if we can't get up for an NCAA tournament game, we don't belong to be here. It's Walker counted at one. It seems that every time there's a switch, and it's a bad switch, that time Trey White is guarding Tyson Walker, who's so quick, he couldn't stay in front of him. They have taken advantage of all these USC switches in this game so far. Tyson Walker, a chance at a three-point play in his second year at Michigan State after transferring from Northeastern. Tom Izzo's been vocal, not a big fan of the portal, did not take anybody this offseason, but he did take Walker the year before, and Izzo telling us that the second year, now that Walker is in his system, has made a big difference, and he's seen a lot of growth out of the Northeastern transfer. Yeah, he's made a huge jump this year. Much more consistent shooting the ball, making better decisions, too. Great help there by Aikens. That is some help defense. Aikens looking to go coast to coast, rejected by White, but Hall gets it back. Carson Cooper, the freshman, getting some first-half run here for his own. Aikens off the side of the backboard comes right to him, and his follow no good either. And then on the glass, Aikens once again comes away with it. Back out to Hall. And, you know, Michigan State is plus three on the glass for this year, which is third in the Big Ten. But when you think of a Tom Izzo team, plus three is nothing. Walker baseline puts it up. Peterson defends him, but Walker hits again. I think USC could use a timeout. I know that the next whistle is going to be a media. Trojans are scoreless in their last six trips. Yeah, this Michigan State defense in the half court has been really tough. To Johnny Wright to a cutting Johnson inside, and that stops the streak. They did a great job of reversing the ball to the other side, and Michigan State wasn't able to get to him fast enough, and the close wasn't good, and Kobe Johnson able to finish inside. First points in the last three minutes and 45 seconds for USC. Tough pass. Cooper is fouled down low. He will shoot when we come back. Well, we got it all going on here right now. Drew Peterson, he's looking pretty good right now. Welcome back to Columbus. I'm here with Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo. Coach, you told us you needed to see improved defense after the Big Ten tournament. Have you seen it in this start? Well, in the start, you know, we're unfortunately only 10 minutes into the game, but we have done a better job defensively. We're getting better weak side help. I think we've done a decent job on the ball screens, but uh, Ellis hasn't lit up yet, and he will lit up. Thank you. Thank you. USC shooting just four of 13 here in the first half. Yeah, I mean, I think Tom is really happy, but he's been around the block a few times, so yeah, he wants to see it go on for another 30 minutes and 28 seconds. Well, how about Tom Izzo as a person against USC as a program in terms of NCAA tournament appearances? Everything tilted Tom's way as it is against many teams. Now in his 28th season, and with Jim Beheim retiring at Syracuse, Izzo is now the longest tenured active head coach. You know, we were together in Maui his first year. We were reminiscing about that Maui tournament yesterday. 
Dixon Waters with the bucket. Sixth man of the year in the Pac-12. That's what he does. He's a mid-range shooter, not a great three-point shooter, but he can do that. Sophomore from Long Beach, California. And that one knocked out. It'll stay with Michigan State. And the infield in his 10th season with USC. It's the 10th anniversary of Dunk City when he was at Florida Gulf Coast. Had, hard to imagine that was 10 years ago, but he did show his team highlights of that run to get him pumped up for this year's tournament. Well, he's done a great job. He's won 20 games, seven of the last eight years. I couldn't even believe it that USC had only done it nine times in 41 years before that. Hauser for three. Yes. His second of the half. You know, the most dangerous guy in basketball today is the stretch four. And he's like the perfect stretch four because not only can he shoot the three, but he's a good rebounder. And that's what you want. And he shoots it at 45%. Boogie Ellis, his step back not there. When Hauser makes two or more threes this season, Michigan State is 16 and three. He's already got two in the first half, out of bounds to the Spartans. Mondays on CBS. Grab your gear and head out with the NCIS team to investigate high stakes crimes with Navy and Marine Corps ties. It's a new episode of NCIS Monday at 9 8 Central on CBS. Nice hand for Carson Cooper. Only averages five minutes per game, but Tom Izzo trusting the freshman here in the first half. Sissoko with the flush. Michigan State with its largest lead of the day. Yeah, they just totally lost Marty Sissoko in the lane that time. Hey. Morgan knocked away by Hauser, and Hogard scoops it up. Aiken is too many steps. You take a look here at what happened and why Matty Sissoko got so open. They really get aggressive and double team that pick and roll, and he slips to the basket, and nobody gets there to give the help. A little bit too much help on the outside and not enough on the inside. Second dunk today for Sissoko. Hogard already with three assists. He averages six per game. And Hogard will get a breather, and the freshman Trey Holloman returns. I think it's a good move by Tom Izzo to get all these kids in in the first half early because you don't want to put a guy in the second half of an NCAA tournament game when things get tight for the first time. So let everybody get a little loose in the first half. But who knows about March better than that guy? Eight and a half to go in the first, and a bump and a foul called on Holloman. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out, take a taste. Yeah, I mean, that's a foul. Dixon Waters. Yes. Last six games, Dixon Waters averaging 12 points per game off the bench. Nothing infuriates Tom Izzo more than for somebody to score on an out-of-bounds play under the basket like that when you went over it in practice. You should have seen him on the bench when that happened. Hauser trying to get position down low, and Johnson's right there. Great defense by Kobe Johnson. And the infield telling us that he thinks Kobe is the best defender in the Pac-12, member of the Pac-12 all-defensive team. Right now, one of the stories of this game is 12 minutes in, and Boogie Ellis has taken two shots. And neither one was a really good look. So, And they've had different guys on him. Aikens has been on him. Holman's on him now. All different guys. Peterson had the hot hand early, trying to heat up again, and he draws the foul. Michigan State bench does not like that call. With 7.51 to go in the first, Spartans still on top. We're back in Columbus. I'm here with USC head coach Andy Enfield. Coach, how do you get Boogie Ellis a few more looks that he looks comfortable with? Well, Boogie needs to be patient with his shot selection. He's a lead guard, so he has to be a good combination of shooting the shot when he's open and making plays for his teammates. Is he feeling rushed? No, I think he just tried to go one-on-one -on -one a few times. He's a great player, so we expect more from him. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.
Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's got a little concern there with this kid just finding his way to getting in the flow because he's 25 points a game his last seven. He's one of the most explosive scorers in the country. Watch whip around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break presented by Nissan in the March Madness Live app. Scan the QR code now to download. Michigan State's turned it over on each of its last two possessions. They lead it 24-17. Holloman running the point for the Spartans. He'll pull up and hit. The freshman from Minneapolis. Mom Crystal played at Minnesota and is currently a high school basketball coach. He's learned a lot from her. That time USC, too much help. They totally left the ball alone and then he kicked it and the other guy was wide open. Can't do that. Here's Ellis, can he get going? No, he's now 0 for 4. Holloman quickly the other way. He's also recruited as an excellent high school football player in Minneapolis. Inside seven minutes to go in the first half. Shot clock down to five. Walker tried to split the D. Over to Aikens, has to put up a three. It's short, and the rebound to Johnson. That was a good defensive set by USC. Great crowd here in Columbus. A lot of Michigan State fans, not a long drive, as we told you, from East Lansing, but... Great stage here at Nationwide Arena. What a great defense by Holloman that time. And Morgan hits another. Four points for Joshua Morgan, the junior from Sacramento. Hauser, that's a two. Sissoko, the offensive rebound, rips it away from Dixon Waters, and he is called for the foul. How about the defense so far by Coach Izzo's squad? Well, they've been holding USC so far to 6-17 to 17 from the field. They've really been locked in. Great help from the weak side, but more importantly, doing a great job. And you see that time, Aikens coming from the weak side, but more importantly, doing a good job of stopping people off the dribble. Tom Izzo putting Hogarth back on the floor. Hauser. Out to Hogarth to reset. There's Hogarth. I'll tell you, this USC defense, the last three possessions, they've really picked it up a notch. And the infield told us yesterday defending the three was his biggest key to this game for the Trojans. Ellis, nice pass to Morgan. One of the few times in the game Michigan State got beat. Oh, oh Aikens! Hello! How about that by the sophomore getting on up? And that was after a made basket. They got the ball down that quickly, and what a finish. These two teams will soon be conference rivals when USC joins the Big Ten in August of next year. And right now, the Spartans up a touchdown. Five minutes to go in the first half. Johnson in the corner. Hogard the lock. Soko got up there but couldn't finish. Wanted a foul, no call. Four on four the other way. Good job in transition. Oh, they lost him. How about that pass? And Morgan again. Joshua Morgan averages less than seven points per game. He already has eight in the first half, including the last six for USC. The lead is down to five. Hauser for three. Ellis still scoreless. 0 for 4 in the first half. Aikens right on him. He'll hand over to Peterson. Aikens is a really good defender. Stay too long. Again, it's Morgan in double figures with 10 points. I mean, it's not even like...
position trying to go over and use that screen for the pick and roll. That's a quick dive by Morgan, and they got Burke for a layup. It's an 8-2 run for USC, and Tom Izzo calls timeout. Back in Columbus with our game summary, and so far in this first half, USC has nine assists on ten made field goals. Well, you know, Tom Izzo, we saw him earlier with Jamie. He was fired up about their defense after the first ten minutes. Not so fired up these last seven minutes, giving up a couple of layups, and he was really upset with Monty Sissoko on that last timeout. On the offensive end, the Spartans have missed five of their last six shots with three and a half to go before halftime. Oh, spin move, rejected by Kajani Wright. That was a big time block because Malik Hall made a great move there. Ellis, and he's got his first bucket of the day. I was going to say, not a great sign for Michigan State that they're up one and that kid hadn't scored yet till then. A 10 2 run. They picked up it. They picked it up a notch on defense. Also, USC. Hall from the outside, and a whistle and a foul is called on Kajani Wright, fighting for the rebound with Jackson Kohler. Timeout on the floor. Back with our tournament summary, and how about the guys in the studio with their day one picks? Clark Kellogg, Charles Barkley, twelve and four. Kenny Smith, eleven and five. Lap. <laughs> I think that's false. I know you were very high on Arizona coming into the week. And, oh, uh, right. You had to throw that in, too, right? <laughs> got to get specific with me. You can't just say, oh, that's baloney 16 and nah, I think You got go to go specific. Arizona. Yeah. I'm sure you weren't the only one that had Arizona going far. All right, two and a half to go. How about this run for USC, Lap? Yeah, it's been about their half-court defense, and Michigan State made a couple of... There's another breakdown there. They are not guard... They started out the game guarding the pick and roll so good not staying too long now they're staying a little bit too long with the guy with the ball and not catching the dive man USC started three of 12 from the floor but since then they've made eight of 11 and Kajani Wright goes to the line with a chance to put USC on top this is the first. Coming up, at and at the half. The aforementioned crew will have scores and highlights and the latest NCAA tournament news all coming up on at and at the half. Watching that Houston game last night and Sasser re-aggravating the injury, that could be a big blow for Houston. Yeah, that's a big one. He only played 14 minutes last night. And groins are tough injuries, you know what I mean? Those, they don't, they don't heal quickly. Wright ties the game at 28. Kohler, turnaround from the baseline. How about it for the freshman from American Fork, Utah? That was a heck of a move, that fadeaway jumper. He started out at six feet and ended up at 13. First player from Utah to play at Michigan State. And Michigan State's first points in the last three minutes and 20 seconds. With Hauser at the scorer's table set to check in. Johnson catching shoot three is good. And USC has the lead. That was a great pass to the weak side of the floor. And Aikens tried to close, but he's a lot smaller than Johnson. And he was able to knock it out. First lead since it was 2-0 for the Trojans. Hall fighting inside. A scramble on the deck. And we have a whistle and a tie-up. Possession arrow favors USC. Take a look at Kobe Johnson. He does a great job of relocating so that the passer can see him. He starts out in the corner, but he'll relocate here when Trey Wright goes through. And he makes himself more available. That's a great pass by Boogie Ellis. Kobe Johnson puts USC on top as we approach one minute to go in the first half. And this very pro Michigan State crowd has gone quiet here the last few minutes. Peterson to Ellis in the corner. Ellis from the wing. 
And Boogie Ellis, one for six to begin this day. Hogard, how about that? Got to the spot and lays it in. That's the second time in this game that USC didn't get back quickly and locate somebody. And that's what Hogard does. He will push it down your throat. And the Michigan State fans on their feet as Andy Enfield calls a timeout. Possible two for one situation. We'll see what happens when we come back. Best Coke ever. Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Too late for a two for one now, but how come more college teams don't do that? It's Steve? a good question. Uh, you know what I mean? Obviously, in the NBA, it's a huge thing. In college, it's not. Some people will use it, some don't. Hard to figure out. I also try to wonder why a lot of most coaches don't foul under five seconds to go when they're up three. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out still. Marquette, Vermont, coming up next on CBS. After a slow start, USC is shooting 48% in the first half. Dixon Waters, that's a three, it's good for Reese. Dixon Waters, just a 28% three-point shooter. And you know, I can't blame Michigan State for going under that screen on him in that situation. You're worried about him driving it, and he made him pay. Final five seconds of the first half. Hogard down low, turnaround is good. And what a first half. Michigan State led 24-13 with 9.07 to go. But USC closes the half on a 21-10 run. And the teams run into the locker room tied at 34. Jamie Erdahl is with Tom Izzo. Coach, you were right to say you had only seen 10 minutes of your defense when we talked last. What happened in the final well, we 10? We did a good job. My centers got tired. We started going up too far in those ball screen. Their center, who hasn't scored that many points in a week, scored, you know, three times in a row. And that was that was the difference. I thought we did a very poor job on our ball screen defense and getting back. We looked tired at that position. I guess that's my fault. Will we see more small lineups then in the second half? Uh, you might, you might, but we got to just rotate them a little bit better because Marty had done a good job. He missed that dunk because I think he got tired, then he missed a couple plays. He'll do a better job. Tell him to rest up. Thanks. That's the end of the first half with the score tied at 34. We'll send you to at and at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Back in Columbus with our Wendy's first half stats. Trojans end the half on a 13 to 6 run and a very evenly matched first half. As we welcome you back courtside with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Jamie Erdahl coming up. You said at the beginning it would be an evenly matched game. It has been. What's going to be the difference in the second half? You know, I think both teams have made significant mistakes defending the pick and roll and have allowed layups in the paint on both sides. In the beginning of the game for USC and then late in the half, Michigan State. I think whoever tightens that up fastest is going to be the team that's going to win this game. Michigan State 7 out of 10 at the rim, 7 out of 20 on all of their other field goal attempts. Hogard in the corner. Drives into the paint, puts up a shot, gets the roll. Let's check in with Jamie Erdahl. Guys, I checked Tom Izzo's math in our interview before the half. He said Joshua Morgan hasn't scored this many points all week. He is, in fact, correct. It's been eight points since February 25th. The reason why this game is catering to Morgan scoring, Andy Enfield told me, it's the way Michigan State is guarding on-ball screens. They hedge hard and allow Morgan to open himself up. I'm told his best shot is a turnaround hook from either side. So look for Morgan in the second half. You know, that's what we talked about a lot, the way they hedge pick and roll, but they haven't really been hedging them that well at the end of the half. Hogard misses with the left hand. You know, a lot of people use this drop coverage now, and Tom Mizzle believes in the hard hedge. They've been getting burnt. Ellis now one of seven after the miss three. Johnson gets it back and misses in tight. Andy Enfield slams the scorer's table after that one. He wanted that one. Oh, 
I'll tell you, you asked me, Andrew, about what's going to be the difference. The other thing is, is Boogie Ellis or Malik Hall going to get going in this game? Sissoko turns it over on the inside. Johnson knocked away by Hauser. Johnson recovers. Now White, and he's fouled. Hogard commits the foul. It'll be two shots for Trey White. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Only three turnovers in the first half for USC on 28 possessions. But Boogie Ellis continues to struggle. He's just one out of seven. Yeah, I mean, this kid was playing like one of the best players in the country. Like I said, seven games, he was after 24 and a half points a game. But this Michigan State team, the guards are physical. You get a guy like Hogard on you, Aikens is a very good athlete, and he's, they're making it really hard on him. Yeah, Tom Izzo told us yesterday that he thought Boogie Ellis it was going to be the best guard Michigan State has faced all year, which is high praise knowing their strength of schedule this season as Walker knocks it down. He just split that pick and roll. One thing, when you split two defenders like that, you're basically five against three, and he was just going to pull up and make the 12-foot jumper. Ellis drives, and this one goes down. And a foul on the perimeter. No, it's an offensive foul. Tom Izzo up off his chair. It looked like that was going to be a call on Kobe Johnson, who's a little slow to get up, but instead an offensive foul against Michigan State. Yeah, Tom Izzo obviously not happy there. Johnson grabbed his neck. And for A.J. Hogard, that's his third foul. Well, they got tangled up, it looked like. And then... Oh, they might look at that. They are looking yeah. at it. See Tom Izzo's reaction. I don't think he's wishing Roger Ayers a happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, they are so protective nowadays of any shot above the neck. That one was in the neck. I, it was inadvertent. It wasn't like, you know, Hogar was trying to do something. Our rules analyst Gene Steratore is with us. Hello, Gene. What do you see here? Hey, Andrew. What, what I see here, honestly, from the angles that I have, I really don't see contact up to that area. Uh, and you've got someone that appears to, you know, imply that he's been hit in the throat to me listen now they've called a foul uh, a common foul when they go over to review this they can have an F1 or F2 which I don't think either are or they can actually remove any foul that was called now and go with with no foul whatsoever uh, and in my opinion I really don't see a lot of contact here at all I, I can see them possibly just removing any foul whatsoever on this play, guys. If, if there's no foul, Gene, I know one thing. When they go to the monitor like that, they can assess a flop for somebody who's faking a foul. Now, I don't know. Did he fake that foul? Because if he can, if he did, they can assess a flop. Without a doubt, Stephen, it's a wonderful point. Look, when you go over there and a player uh, gives you this impression like they've really been hit in a severe way, and as you said, there doesn't appear to be any contact. That becomes an unsporting technical foul for embellishing something that didn't exist. Now, there might be slight contact there as we watch Roger Ayers talk to both players, but I don't know that if there's slight contact, you can say that he's completely embellishing or pretending as if there's, you know, there's contact, if there's a little. So I can see them just wiping everything away here and just playing basketball without a foul at all. And that's exactly what they did. Well, they kept the common foul, I believe, and yes. that's it. And now they're playing on, Gene. The foul sticks. Okay. Thank you, Gene. A.J. Hogard picks up his third. And Tom Izzo takes him out of the game. Fans here, a lot of Michigan State supporters do not agree. And now we're going the other way. An offensive foul as Tyson Walker draws the charge, and he is slow to get up. And it looked like Boogie Ellis making a really strong move. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, he stuck the left arm out at the end. You're going to see that left arm right there. Oh, yeah. 
It's a good call by Roger Ayers. And Walker is still grimacing in some pain. And now the officials are going to go right back to the monitor to take a look and see if there's a possible flagrant one on this last play. <laughs> Valon Ellis is his second. No, definitely not a flagrant no. one. And a very quick yeah. stop at the scorer's table. Offensive foul stays, and that's all it is. Now Tyson Walker is getting taped up on his right elbow. Jamie, you're right over there. Yeah, he was in a lot of pain when he first, that was the first part of his body he fell on when he took that fall, Tyson Walker did. The thing is, he did a slow walk in front of the USC bench. I'll say there was some conversation between Tyson Walker and players. A few of the coaches from USC got involved. It's just something to watch as this game unfolds. All right, good point, Jamie. This is a great scene in this building in Columbus. Almost every seat taken and a lot of Michigan State fans. So intensity at an all-time high. Is Hauser looking for his third three? Yes. One thing about Hauser, he knows how to come off a screen, and Michigan State knows how to screen for him. 11 points for Joey Hauser. Ellis on the other end, off class for two, and Boogie Ellis is starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, looking to drive it now a little bit. Akins for three. Hauser, the weak side rebound. See how long Tom Izzo keeps Hogard on the bench with three fouls. Walker splits the D right to the hoop and lays it in. That's the second time he did that. When you're gonna, when those two defenders come, they have to put their feet together so that he can't do that. You know from scouting, he loves to split double teams. Walker in double figures, he's got 10 points. And you mentioned Hogard, Andrew. I think he's got to sit till the 10-minute mark, maybe 11. Morgan, that's his first miss today. He had been five out of five. Dixon Waters hops off the bench for Andy Enfield. He'll check in next whistle. Aikens on the drive. And Aikens has some ups and a chance at three when we come back. Aikens showing his ups. And Joey Hauser knows how to come out off a screen, knocking the three. Mom and dad feeling that one for sure. 45-40. Spartans ahead. Wow, Adam, how about that? Kennesaw State, the lead on Xavier. We'll see another Big East team coming up here next in Columbus when Marquette takes on Vermont. Number three, Jaden Akins at the line, a chance at a three-point play to put the Spartans up by six. I tell you what Jaden Akins has shown. He's some kind of athletic. Misses the free throw, and Peterson grabs the rebound. Akins has eight points. Peterson with Hall on him. Peterson nowhere to go out to Ellis. Looks like this Michigan State team. I don't know what Tom Mizzle told him at halftime. Toughened up on defense. Big and here time. comes Walker the other way. Walker running the show with Hogard on the bench with three fouls. Hauser off the screen, catch and shoot, no good, and tipped back out, out of bounds, it's USC ball. Yeah, Joey Hauser knows how to come off a screen ready to shoot the ball. Tom Izzo saying this is not the most talented team he's ever had, but it's one of the more connected 
teams he's ever had. And we've seen that make a big difference. You know, Marquette, that's a big part of what Shaka Smart does. And Tom Izzo thinks his team is primed for a run here in March. There is no sport where chemistry matters more than basketball. Five guys have to share the ball. Five guys have to defend the ball. That needs chemistry. USC scoreless in the last two minutes and 20 seconds. Drew Peterson been quiet so far at the start of the second half. They had five points early, but only two since, and he misfires on that three. Walker, nice feed, Cooper the finish. A 9-2-1 for Michigan State. What great execution. A good screen led to a tremendous slip. Fourth assist for Tyson Walker. White had it poked away and a turnover by the Trojans. Walker, speed in the open court. Missed it, but Mr. Cooper with the follow. Timeout, USC. Time now for our Aflac trivia Aflac. on a beautiful day in Columbus. Four seven seeds have made the final four, including Michigan State back in 2015, and the Spartans are a seven seed this year. On an 8-0 run right now, they've upped their lead to nine. What has to change for USC, Steve? Well, they got to start doing something, too, with Jackson, uh, with Kohler and Cooper. Those guys got eight points and three rebounds between them. That is a big bonus for Michigan State, but their defense has not been consistent in the second half. Peterson for three. And Morgan gets the offensive rebound, but USC now two for nine in the second half, and then Kobe Johnson rattles the rim. That stops the run. You know, and they're getting hurt in the paint. 28 to 14, and Michigan State only outscored two teams in the last 14 games from the paint area. <laughs> it's Hall, defended by Ellis, and an offensive foul on Malik Hall. Tom Izzo furious. And you know what happened? Malik Hall saw Boogie Ellis on him. And he just decided he was going to try and take him. Ah, uh, that's... I don't know. That could have been flop worthy. Ellis sold it, and he brings the ball into the front court. And Hall almost took it right back, but Dixon Waters bails out the Trojans. Dixon Waters off. Oh. Ah! Feed to Morgan, who's having a day. A dozen for Morgan. His season high is 15. Carson Cooper left Morgan alone, thinking he needed to help there when really he didn't, and nobody helped him, and they end up with a dunk. And Sissoko quickly hops off the bench for Michigan State. Hall inside. Yes, tough shot for Malik Hall. Quickly, Peterson the other way. Dixon Waters for three. It's gone. Yeah, that transition defense wasn't good. Malik Hall was a little slow getting up, and he was pointing to his teammates to get to Drew Peterson quicker in that right corner. Didn't get to him. He was able to pass it there to Waters, and he knocked it out. Dixon Waters just a 28% three-point shooter, but he's made a pair of threes today. I got to think A.J. Holger is coming back in soon. Five on the shot clock, Hall off the front of the rim, and he's fouled. A foul on USC, but the Trojans are making a charge. Well, they start pushing it up. Great pass there from Waters to Morgan. 51-47, Spartans. We are back with our game summary. Both teams doing a pretty good job in the turnover department. 
Meanwhile, Jamie Erdahl, it's getting a little heated in the <laughs> Michigan State huddle. Well, there was a big lookout moment uh, for Tom Izzo. We are down one whiteboard if we're counting on the Spartan <laughs> sideline. Snapped right with his bare hands heading into the, uh, after a heated conversation with the official. Got to get your emotions out somehow. He coached up these guys pretty tough. He was hard on them with the three-point defense because USC's hitting shots in transition, specifically with Malik Hall and extending his length to de defend against the outside shot. But sorry about that whiteboard, guys. I was impressed with the wrists, i got to be honest with you. He was able to break that pretty easily. I broke one once, and it took me a little bit more than it took Izzo. I've seen you break a wedge around the <laughs> greens as well. Peterson step back is good. You know, I was going to say, Peterson and Ellis were 5 for 17, the two of them, before that shot there, so they need to get going. And still no Hogard for Michigan State. Yeah, and, and you know, as it's gotten closer, he's only got three. It's not like he has four. Aikens through traffic, off balance jumper, no. Winner of this one will take on the winner of our next game on CBS between Marquette and Vermont. And now Hogard comes off the bench. Peterson, right to Walker, what a catch by Walker. Numbers the other way. Walker to Aikens, reverse, and he draws the foul. You can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. That was some snatch by Tyson Walker there. And then the drive and the foul on the other end by Kobe Johnson. This is a pretty good snatch. And Hogard at the scorer's table. He's going to enter for Aikens, who makes the first free throw. Nine points for Jaden Aikens, the Farmington, Michigan native who missed four games in November after he had left foot surgery in September. So he missed the whole preseason. Took him a while to get in the swing of things, but what an impact he has made once the calendar turned to 2023. Yeah, he's been double figures his last four games, so really playing well. Misses the second, so Hogard still at the table. Ellis slips and recovers. Out to Peterson, but Ellis stepped out of bounds. Fourth turnover this half. Now he's and Andy Enfield was saying that Sissoko kind of forced him out of bounds. And here's Hogard back, bringing the ball up the floor. Midway through the second half, a five-point game on CBS. Hogard quickly going to work, and Morgan is called for the foul. Hogard is so strong, he went right for the body. And you're going to see it here. He knows it's coming. That's the first foul on Joshua Morgan, sending Hogard to the line. Sunday on CBS, catch two new exciting episodes of The Equalizer and East New York with Queen Latifah, Amanda Warren, Jimmy Smits, and Richard Kine. It all starts Sunday at 8, 7 central after 60 minutes on CBS. Hogard makes a pair, 81% on the year for Hogard after he went 63% a year ago. Last five Michigan State points have come at the free throw line. Peterson on the wing, over to Morgan, high arcing shot, no good, and the rebound grabbed by Johnson, and a foul is called. Morgan was getting ready to travel, and he threw that thing up. <laughs> Fouls called against Hauser. Sissoko's pick and roll defense this half has been significantly different. I'm I sure he was said something was said to him at halftime. Now, why is that? <laughs>
Spartans feeling good in Columbus. We'll take on the winner of this one. Right now, Michigan State up by nine with Carson Cooper at the free throw line. You know, the difference in the second half, Andrew, that was obviously a bad miss, is that Michigan State's defense is holding USC to six for 18 from the field. They had picked it up. They haven't gotten hurt on those pick and rolls and have done a much better job than USC in that area. Cooper comes up empty. Now USC on its last eight trips, 0 for 5 with three turnovers. Where do the Trojans turn? Really good help defense that time. Boogie Ellis was trying to take his man. That's a tough shot. Great defense. Really good by the Spartans, and Aikens comes the other way. Great help there, great recovery. Carson Cooper on the pick and roll, got back quickly. Tom Izzo said it, it's so simple, but you don't win in the NCAA tournament without defense. And the second half defensive intensity has really picked up for Michigan State. Hall with position and connects. The one thing that we've also seen in this game, when you come and see live, they are, Michigan State is a much more physical team than USC. they just bigger, stronger guys. Morgan to follow. USC may be longer and a little more athletic, but Michigan State, they're physical, and their guards are physical. That stops a five-minute scoring drought for USC. Inside six minutes to go in this first round game in the East region. Spartans getting it done in the paint today. They want to get Malik Hall on Drew Peterson. Shot clock is down to four. Hogard has to go. Hot off the glass, no. And Peterson has it. Trey White running the floor, and the pass is picked off. Ambitious pass for Drew Peterson, turnover number nine by USC. And, and Trey White did have Joey Hauser beat, but that was going to be a tough pass. Hauser from the corner. Good! If, if Joey! Leave, whoa! Hauser with four threes! If you leave this guy alone, forget about it. 46% from three point line. Largest lead of the day for Michigan State. Ellis tough shot. Well contested by Aikens. USC can't get a clean look. Cannot. And the fans here in Columbus loving it. Their defense on the ball has been unbelievable. Akins from the corner. Fourteen points for Joey Hauser today on the strength of four three-pointers. Yeah, I mean, this kid can step into a three as good as anybody in the country. He's also a very good rebounder. He's got five in this game. He averages almost seven. He is what you call the prototypical stretch four. There's a look at us getting all fired up with the fans. <laughs> Exciting action here in Columbus. Well, I, I messed up your friend's reference. I apologize, you know. I didn't mess I up anything. Caught one, I finally caught one of your uh, things, you know what I mean? <laughs> one of your pop culture, uh, yeah. whatever yeah, you want to call I'm it. very current with a friend's reference. <laughs> Peterson no good. <laughs> I guess I'm that far behind. And that three from the outside is there for Kobe Johnson. 12-point game. Michigan State was on a 13-2 run until that triple from Kobe. And USC trying something. They come up with the 2-2-1 press, but that's a little too easy. Walker, oh. though, misses the bunny. You know what? The one thing the press will do is speed you up. He's got to make that Walker. He didn't. That really obviously helped USC. Keep in mind, Andy Enfield just used his final timeout, so none remaining for the Trojans. Johnson again? Yes. 
Back to back for Kobe. And some pressure now for USC. Nothing's ever easy in the NCAA tournament. Bogard using some time. Three minutes to go. Paul spinning. Tough fadeaway. Not there. And Kobe Johnson the rebound. You know, I'm always hesitant with three minutes to go. You're up nine. You start to slow it down a little bit. And then you don't get a good shot at the end of the shot clock. Sometimes I question whether you're doing that a little too early. Johnson feeling it. Not this time, though. Hauser with the rebound. I mean, obviously, if you get under two minutes and you're up nine, I get it. But they need to get a good shot here. This would be the 20th win of the year for Michigan State and send them to the second round on Sunday. Seven on the shot clock. Paul, turnaround, way short, and Ellis has it with two minutes to go. Ellis, that's a soak go, lost it. Walker fighting for it, and he picks it up, and he'll pull it back. Good move by Tyson Walker. Really good move to pull that out. That's an experienced kid. You got to be thinking about fouling. Ellis commits the foul. Tough day for Boogie. Just six points on three of 11 shooting. And you know, it wasn't one of those days, and the game's not over yet, that Boogie Ellis was just missing. Michigan State was making him miss. He came up against a really good physical defense today. Bogart comes up short, and the rebound cleared by Johnson. Dixon Waters, tough shot. Morgan couldn't hold on to it. 90 seconds left. Might as well foul again. And they do. Peterson with the bad back. Held to just nine points today. So Andy Enfield's top two guys, Ellis and Peterson, a combined 15 points on six of 20 shooting. Now let's face it, USC's not going to win with those two guys struggling like that. Listen, when your two best players don't play well and you're playing a good team, you're going to have a problem. Like Morgan was 5-for-5 five five in the first half. I'll tell you what, Michigan State is not doing anything to help themselves. Yeah, Hogard, usually reliable this year at the line, is misses another. Johnson puts up another three. No good. Sissoko goes up to grab it, and he's fouled. I mean, USC has had plenty of chances these last three, four possessions. Missed foul shots, missed that little jumper in the lane by Walker, but they have not been able to take advantage of it. Five straight empty trips for Tom Izzo's Spartans, and now it'll be Sissoko at the line. You hate to bring up that game against Iowa, but that was, I mean, Michigan State was up 11 with 49 seconds to go and lost that game in overtime. I'm not saying, but you got to finish it off when you can finish it off. One and one for Sissoko. And Michigan State now 0 for 3 on its one and ones. But, you know, if USC can't take advantage of it like that. They call it Michigan State ball, but they are going to take a look at the monitor inside two minutes here. Well, you brought up that game, the crazy comeback that Iowa had against Michigan State. Certainly some bad memories for Spartans fans from that one. Take another look. Looks like yeah. it was Johnson who lost it. Looked pretty clear. Oh, yeah. That should be a quick one. I mean, really, USC has done everything they could to get possessions. They've missed every foul shot lately, Michigan State. And they just haven't been able. The one thing Iowa did that day, they were missing shots, but they were making threes. Yes. Three, three. 
Michigan State, six consecutive empty trips, but USC with five in a row. And it is Michigan State ball. State ball coach. Roger Ayers confirming with us. Roger in his 18th NCAA tournament, <laughs> and he just said, You're still a coach to me. <laughs> he also told us before the game he's a big fan of yours. I think he was. He wants to be nice to him during the yeah, game. Yeah, no? I think so. <laughs> That's how those referees are. <laughs> Time out on the floor. It's a Tom Izzo timeout with 108 to go in the first half. 27th consecutive winning season for Michigan State. That's the fourth longest active streak. On the verge of picking up win number 20 on the year. Hauser is fouled. Let's see if Hauser can stop this ugly streak at the free throw line where the Spartans have missed six in a row. Well, at least he's going to shoot two this time. And the struggles continue. Hauser's an 87% free throw shooter. I mean, you can't. Can't give more chances than they've given them in the last minute and a half. And on the season, Michigan State led the Big Ten in free throw shooting at 76%. One out of two for Hauser. It's a 10 point game. And his parents watching. Hoping to stay the weekend here in Columbus. Ellis for three. Good box out. Hauser the rebound and is fouled. Since 2015, Michigan State has only made it out of the first weekend one time. Now, that one time was the Final Four in 2019, but nobody on this team and this current roster has made it to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament, and that's been a rallying cry for the Spartans this year. I don't know when the streak ended, but Tom Izzo had a streak of about 20 years where every guy that played for him four years went to at least one Final Four. I mean, that's the most incredible record I ever heard of. A lot of records when you look up at Izzo's resume now at the age of 68. Well, it's like we were talking about that Maui trip when we first met. He was first year at Michigan State, and he was talking about the game. They lost. They beat Shamanad by two in the first game. And I said, uh, well, we won that tournament. So, yeah, I think you'd say that. Well, it's the only time I ever won anything when you were around. <laughs> time out, Izzo. Back with our game reset. Michigan State has one timeout remaining. USC with none. It's a 69-57 lead. And the Spartans coming in, having lost three of their last four tournament games. No, I know that. <laughs> Lap still hamming it up with Roger Ayers. I've, I've never seen a guy who despised the officials more. Now he's best friends with them. <laughs> who despised? He just, you know what? He just came up and said, Coach, I never teed you. I said, I know that. I know exactly who teed me. And let me tell you something. That guy in the studio we got back home, he teed me once or twice. Hello, Gene Steratore. <laughs> Now you and Gene are even buddies. That's crazy. There's Roger. <laughs> Again, when's the last time you fist bumped a referee? Oh my oh. gosh. It's been a long time. They all love you now. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not sitting there trying to ref from the sidelines. <laughs> Peterson inside, and he hits. And no timeouts left, so they just have to foul immediately. And they can't be picky. Hauser to Walker, and Ellis is called for the foul. Ellis thought he had a steal. Instead, Walker will go to the line. Hey, Gene Steratore, have you ever seen a guy change face as much as Lap since he's a TV analyst now? 
You know what? I'm really surprised right now, Andrew, because all those games before we would start, I would see Roger over there talking to Coach Lapis and wonder why they were being so nice to each other. Then I would be the one that would have to tee him, and Roger would look at me and say, can't you guys just get along or something like that, you know? Now I know, Andrew. Now I'm aware, and I really liked working with both of them, guys. I mean that. <laughs> Oh my God! We've come full circle. It really has. Yes, absolutely. absolutely, big kumbaya moment from Steve Lapis and the officials. This is Hornery banking in a three. Harrison Hornery, the sophomore from Australia. 71-62. Hogard in the corner and is fouled. USC was a seven seed last year, lost in the first round of Miami. Prior to that, 2021 made the Elite Eight before they got nipped by Gonzaga. And now the Spartans, after having missing seven consecutive free throws, have now made five in a row with Hogard at the line. Ten points, five assists for AJ today. Boogie Ellis out of the game now. Great career. Boogie is fouled out. Six points on three of 12 shooting. Transfer from Memphis. Had a great season for USC. This will leave a bitter taste in his mouth as Hogard rattles it in. Well, this Michigan State team, and again, when you see somebody live, you get a whole different feel. Much more physical than you think. Stronger and really tough. Well, it's not a surprise with Tom Izzo. Really a tough half-court defensive team. Dixon Waters with the left hand. Rolls around and out. Hogarth the rebound with 20 seconds to go. And it looks like USC will not foul. Tied at the half, but Tom Izzo and the Spartans get it done after halftime, and Michigan State is moving on to the second round. Four and double figures for the Spartans, led by Joey Hauser with 17 points. And we update the bracket. Michigan State will play Sunday here in Columbus against the winner of our next game on CBS between Marquette and Vermont. Win number 20 for Tom Izzo in Michigan State. And Jamie is with the victorious coach. Coach, you put the clamps down defensively. Your guys look very focused coming out of the locker room. What changed? Well, you know, we did play good defense most of the way. I mean, give them some credit, but it was our ball screen defense on those slips. We tried to clean up a little bit of that. We didn't go up as far. But you got to give it uh, Tyson Walker because I'm telling you, Ellis is the real deal. I mean, he's not a good player. He's a great player. We did a hell of a job on Ellis and Peterson. And, uh, you know, A.J. did a little bit of that, but Tyson... Jaden Akins did a hell of a job on those guys. Coach, I need to talk to you about what you've been doing in the weight room because um, you had a performance here in the timeout huddle when this thing, you, you snapped this like a two. twig. These are harder to break than those old cardboard ones that Lapis had. That's what he said. See, he wouldn't have been strong enough to break this. So, uh, Is that a gift for Lap? Yeah, keep it at the lap. All right? It's just part of the fun. I'm glad you're making fun of me, but I love it, man. It was, uh, you know what? What? We're going to coach guys. We're going to do what we do. Instead of, you know, not letting them uh, get away with this and that, we're going to be hard on them because defense wins games. Especially in the NCAA tournament. We appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> hard to argue with the success of Tom Izzo.